Hi there, Amy McGowan, IndoorCycleInstructor.com. I'm here at CycleQuest in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, and we've got a very special event going on tonight. With me is someone you may recognize. His name is Pete Thomas, and Pete, tell us how people may recognize you. Well, thank you very much for having me. My name is Pete Thomas, and you may recognize me as the at-home winner from season two of NBC's The Biggest Loser. Uh, while I was there on The Biggest Loser Ranch, I started out at my largest is over 416 pounds, first day on The Biggest Loser Ranch, weighed in at about a, a 400 101 pounds, lost 83 pounds in 62 days, and then came home, lost another 102 pounds at home. So when I went back to the actual live finale, I'd lost 185 pounds in just about nine months. And I've been able to keep that off for somewhere around six years. And you won some money doing that. Yes, it was a good day. It was a good day uh, in the neighborhood. You know, it was a good day okay. in the neighborhood. I lost, uh, I won over $100,000 on that day. All right, and take a look at this guy, John. Thank you. I'm trying to get all of you guys. <laughs> You look great. Thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Question for you. Yes. On The Biggest Loser, um, it w you work out a lot. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. We worked out on my season, worked out about four hours a day, typically high intensity between 85 to 95 percent of our maximum heart rate. We shot for that every single time we worked out. Now, subsequent seasons, they work out more hours, but at lower intensities. They work out up to eight hours a day, but the intensities are lower. So, yes, you can. It, it's we worked out very hard. Absolutely. Okay. Um, you know, there are different training regimens, mm -hmm. different theories, different programs, millions of them. Yep. That might be a slight exaggeration, but probably not. Probably uh, true. Probably true. And there have been criticisms, yes, uh, you know, of the training regimens and, and what goes on on the ranch. Yes. Can you tell us sort of your thoughts, mm -hmm. what worked for you, what didn't, and how you have kept this physique since that season? Thank you. Well, the first thing is whenever someone criticizes this show, they criticize it from a place of misinformation, or I should say ignorance, really, not enough information. For instance, over the course of a week, there are 168 hours in a week. No one has ever seen an entire week's worth of workouts and a week's worth of our eating and nutrition, any of that. What you've seen on NBC is you see about an hour and 20 minutes worth of activity. You haven't, no one has even seen an entire workout. An entire workout averages about between one hour and two hours. They don't show that on The Biggest Loser. On average, The Biggest Loser takes about 12, when I say Biggest Loser, I mean NBC, they take 1,200 hours of footage and cut it down to an hour and 20 minutes. So if I took a week of your life and I cut it down to an hour and 20 minutes, what could I really tell about you? Nothing. And so most people that criticize the show, they criticize it from a point of ignorance. They see some snippets and the snippets are designed what to I be dramatic. I learned about workout intensity. I learned about cardiovascular exercise, resistance training, and how to put these things together, the different ways, the different muscles I work out. And I really learned it in seed form. I learned it so that when I came back home, I educated myself on nutrition, on exercise science, on psychology, all these things that I needed to make a permanent change. And of course, now the good thing is I'm able to teach class, and I teach class uh, called Lose It Fast, Lose It Forever there in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, and I get gangbuster results by taking the same principles that we learned there on The Biggest Loser and sharing that with others. So the pass it forward principle. Absolutely, absolutely. It's so key. And then the other thing is we need to recognize that there's a difference between someone who's just going to the gym and someone who is actually training for something, you know, or it actually has a program in place. And what I teach people is I specifically, my niche is weight loss. And so a person who's working out to lose weight is different from a person who's working out to build mass or a person who's working out for a triathlon or to do what we're doing is to do a hundred mile bike ride this coming weekend. All of those really, you've got different goals and so you should have a different program or different regimen with each of those particular goals. Okay. We want to thank you so much for being here. I want you guys to know that um, Pete is going to be on our podcast, so look forward to hearing that. It's coming up soon when we get our schedules together. Uh, they are waiting for Pete in the class here at CycleQuest tonight and we're holding them up. So thank you so much. It was an inspiration to be in your class tonight. Thank you. I thank you so much for being here. You look fantastic. You. And this is some long-term weight loss, guys. Um, thanks to NBC. And the 2005, Lance Armstrong was actually going for one of his Tour of France wins. And uh, I was watching the Tour de France on some network. And uh, I would watch and I'd pick up things. So it's interesting to watch, of course, their kids. Their professionals have about 90. Yeah, I, I, I need to 100 a minute. I learned this in 05 because when I was at home, I did a lot of bike rides. I'd ride my bike to the gym and go work out. And I learned things, you know, just about my ass is incredible. Lung mm -hmm. capacity. I don't know about the EPO, all of that stuff, you know, <laughs> if that helped. But I learned a lot of things. And so the thing that I want to mention is, in context with that is, you learn stuff from the pros. 
that you apply it to your own personal life. And so I can remember. It's been one minute. <laughs> Seated now. Seated. Don't change the resistance. <laughs> Don't change the resistance. So what I would notice is, you know, that when he would cycle to keep that cadence up, he would have a, a certain downstroke. And in my mind, I would just go tap, tap, <coughs> tap, tap, because he had to keep a certain cadence. Obviously, we'll take a look at that. I'm down at 15. Now, for him to do that, he's got all kinds of special equipment on his bike like we do and all of that. It was just great information, great knowledge. The bad thing was, I challenged myself. I said, okay, I don't have a flat tire repair kit or anything. I'm in front of the exposure. And if I get a flat out here on the road, I'm just going to jog all the way home with my bike. And then I caught a flat after a two hour ride, and I was eight miles from home. It was the longest eight miles of my life. So don't do that. I don't know why I mentioned it. Yeah, it was a painful. <laughs> no, I